We live in a society that suggests bigger is always better. But that's not always true. A bigger car is not always better than a smaller one. A bigger church is not always better than a smaller one. A bigger person is not always stronger than a smaller one. But because man looks on the outward appearance, we are caught up with the package. And if the package is big, we think it must be better. But it is not always better. Because many times good things come in small packages. I'm reminded of a story. Can I, this is Christmas. Let me just give you a little Christmas story. I was told of a young girl who was born and raised blind. She got tired of hearing everybody talking about how blue the ocean was or how bright the sun was, how Wonderful. The sea waves look crashing up against the rocks. And inevitably, rather than to adjust to her circumstances, she became increasingly bitter, antagonistic, resentful, frustrated. We do that whenever we feel like everybody else got something we didn't. Some of us are miserable, not because we're miserable, but we're miserable because we think other people got something better. I think it's that childlike nature that never dies inside of us, that competitive nature to think that the gift I have been given equates with my value rather than the giver that gave it. And so the Bible says that comparing yourself with one another in so doing it is not wise and yet if you have kids more than one they do compare you bought you bought johnny a bike and sometimes i wounded a lifetime because you bought me a tricycle never really thinking that my legs were too short to reach the bike. We compare ourselves with one another, not understanding that the gift is commensurate with our ability to manage what has been given. That's why the Bible rebukes us from being covetous because sometimes we crave what we couldn't handle. This girl was bitter because everybody else could see but her, a young man met her and he thought she was amazing. He thought she was beautiful. He, he, he thought she was beautiful inside and out. And he gave her something that we all need. He loved her. He loved her. And he was the only person to whom she was not antagonistic or resentful. Because even though she could not see him, she sensed that he loved her. Because love is something you sense. So all of you that are trying to pay for it, you, you can't buy it. And all of you that only feel love when you are given, you cannot count it. Love is sensed and not seen. She sensed that he loved her. And she said, I love you too. I love you so much that if I could see, I would marry you. If I could see, I, I would marry you. I just, just don't think it's right for me to marry you like I am. But if I ever get where I could see. He said, you don't have to see for us to get married. I love you the way you are. She said, yeah, you're okay with it, but I'm not okay with it. If I could see, I would marry you. You're so amazing. You're so wonderful. You've been so kind. You have been the reason that I live. You are the air I breathe. 
You are the energy in my walk. You are the brightness in my spirit. And if I could ever see, I would marry you. And one day he came to her and he told her, he said, I just got a report from the doctors. They found a donor. And if we go right now, you could get a transplant and you could see. She said, are you serious? Oh my God, are you serious? You mean I can see? Really? Yes! So they prepped her for surgery, rolled her in the surgery, and they did the transplant. And at first with the bandages and the swelling and the darkness, she still couldn't see, but as the bandages came off and the swelling went down, she opened up her eyes and that that she had waited all her life to get had come she could see the lights in the room the colors on the wall the draperies on the window she could see and she was happy until she looked over at him and he was blind And he said, I'm so happy for you. You got what you wanted. You can see. Will you marry me? And she said, absolutely not. You're blind. I'm not marrying you. And he was crushed. He was devastated. He had that feeling that all of us have had at one time or another of being rejected. Rejection doesn't ease up easily. But as he took his stick and he started to walk away, he turned and said to her, even if you don't want me, I hope you enjoy my gift. You see, he was not just her lover, he was her donor. And the only reason he was blind was so she could see. And I couldn't help but think about Jesus because <laughs> he who had no sin became sin for me. He who never committed adultery and never mistreated anyone and never stole anything and never abused anybody loved me so much that he traded places with me and he went to the cross as if he had done wrong. And yet some of us say, oh no, I can't marry you. You're blind. And he says, I'm only this way because I loved you. Two little small things changed his life, changed her life, and changed his life. And he walked away blind so that she could see Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You, you see, God is not really into 
big gifts. He's into little things. He, he, you see an apple seed, but God sees an orchard. Not just a tree, but the tree that produces more apples, that produces more seeds, that produces more trees, that produces more apples, are all in the one seed. So you toss the seed away because you're praying for orchards. Never really realizing that the orchard that you prayed for is in the apple seed. That the vineyard that you needed was in the grape you rejected. The Bible says the sustainability of all creation exists not in the power of the one who created it, but in the power of the seed he placed in creation. He only created one time, and after that, each thing producing seed after its own kind. God is a giver of small.